way, uh, for the final segment of this special show, reviewing what happened in 2013 and what we're going to see in 2014, uh, the, in this segment particularly on the Detroit Auto Show. So, Carl, uh, we're going to be uh, a little bit colder than we are here. Uh, now you are in Southern California. I'm in South Florida. So we're going to travel to Detroit to experience a little bit of uh, weather over there. But uh, we're going to see a lot of great new cars. Yeah, we are. This show is going to be fun. Uh, you know, the LA show was was great. I liked it because it had so many fun cars, like 911 turbos and WRXs and all that. And we're you know we're going to see the same a lot of the same thing here. You know, we're going to see things like the new M3 and M4. Uh, we're going to see the Z06, the Corvette Z06. Uh, you know, we're going to even see um, the 2 Series, which is really the two-door version of, a, of the 1 Series um, because of the BMW's new naming convention. They've changed things, so they have to have a 2 Series now for the coupe and the convertible. But we'll see that there. Um, we're going to see a Nissan uh, concept car that actually just got a sneak peek at last night, um, which really looked nice. So I, uh, people are going to like that uh, you know, Cadillac ATS Coupe. So there's going to be a lot of cars there, but they're going to be everyone. Everything I know of that's going to be there is like this fun, you know, performance-oriented type of uh, vehicle. I think the show is going to be loaded with that. Yeah, and it's going to be fun. I just remember 2008, 2009. That uh, auto show in Detroit was like more than a funeral than a party. <laughs> no, that's exactly right. That's it. It's, it's so nice to see shows that are like this again. Because uh, yeah, both of us probably wondered if we were going to even see a Detroit auto show in 2014, a couple of years. Ago, the way things were going for a while. Yeah, and uh, another car that we're going to see, and uh, we uh, in, in passed a segment on the one before. We talk about like there's no bad cars in the market anymore, but I think the Chrysler 200, and with uh, to 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 be fair, that's the last car that the new uh, command of the Chrysler has uh, have not redesigned. So we're going to see the new version of the 200, which I think. Uh, they they are going to do a pretty good job with that car. Like they have to, I guess, like because it's a, a high volume car for them. Even that it's sold in fleets for most uh, uh, most numbers, I would think. But uh, the 200, I think, is probably going to be something a big splash for Chrysler, no? Now they know they've got to get this one right. They've done a lot of great work recently. The Jeep Cherokee is, is doing really well, uh, I think, as you noted earlier, and and uh, um, you know the Dart's doing relatively well for them. The Ram is doing fabulous. The Ram truck, the Grand Cherokee is doing well, but they really need a mainstream midsize sedan that goes up against the Accord and the Camry, and they need a good one because that's a dedicated and very uh, competitive market. So. Um, the 200, I believe, is going to be a very uh, well-executed car if, if it follows the pattern of every other Chrysler product that's come out in the last 12 to 18 months under the new ownership, then I'm expecting great things from the 200. Yeah, uh, and it's uh, a little bit funny how uh, things have also changed for the auto shows. Um, nowadays, we're getting like tons and tons of information about what we're going to see there, and it's almost like no surprise. I mean, pretty much all the information pro uh, about, uh, for example, the uh, C-Class from Mercedes-Benz, uh, it's out. I mean, like the only thing that I left to see is like the actual car, and, and I'm sure some people, as you were mentioning with that uh, Nissan concept, probably are, have seen the car. So uh, pretty interesting to see. So do you expect any surprises, like real surprises at the auto show? Not real ones. I mean, there is a lot of rumblings suggesting that Toyota is going to have a new Supra, which if you knew what the last Supra was like when it went out in 98, uh, there's been a lot of anxious uh, and uh, impatient waiting because that was actually a really fabulous car. And Toyota is on this kind of new kick to have more fun and passion in all their products and in their image. So it's a perfect vehicle for them to launch at this point in time with what they want to do. And I have it on pretty good authority that uh, we can likely expect to see something along those lines, some kind of a two-door sporty coupe that might actually be called the Supra. And I 
think that's fabulous. Again, this should be a fun show. Even even if, if just all the stuff we know about shows up, it's going to be fun. And I think we might get a few surprises like that, like a Toyota Super potentially. That would be great. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, because again, I mean, I mean, we're in the media. Probably, obviously, know a little bit more than the re we'll hope, right? <laughs> than the regular people out there. I mean, I know you do. I, I'm not sure about myself, but <laughs> anyways. So. Uh, what about the what about the Mustang too? I mean, again, it's like the, it's like what you just said about the C class and all the other cars. We've seen everything, but still, that'll be its kind of first official auto show debut, and I and I still consider that a hugely important car, and I'm anxious to see it on the show floor. Yeah, absolutely, and that happened to me last year with the Corvette. Uh, because again, all the information, the images, the videos were leaked, and uh, it, it was one thing to see that. Then there was a second thing to actually see the car on the on the stand and the turntable and all that, and I wasn't I wasn't really convinced about it. I mean, I, I kind of like it, but wasn't really really sure about it. And then when I saw it on the streets and uh, and, and actually drove it, I mean, I fell in love. So yeah, the Ford Mustang uh, was uh, debuted globally actually in six cities simultaneously uh, last month, uh, early this month actually. And uh, it's going to be like fun to see it and like uh, see how how what's the reaction of uh, more people over there. Yes. Yeah. And uh, what do you expect? Anything? Uh, we we touched a little bit briefly about Tesla in the last segment. Do you expect to, for them to show up with something in there? Uh, I mean, there's uh, plans for them to come up with a uh, with a smaller version of the I don't know if it's a smaller version of the S uh, and the Model S, but uh, they're also been talking about like having a, even a, a smaller car than that. Yeah, they're trying to crack the code on a 200 mile, forty thousand dollar. Uh, electric car and uh, that would actually be a really impressive feat if they did it because 200 miles gets you past a lot of the range anxiety people get from electric cars and 40,000 is a price point much more digestible than the current Model S is at like 75 plus so uh, I don't know if we're going to see anything on that at Detroit but we're definitely going to see something in like the next 12 months that will be very indicative of that car being in the pipeline and ready to go on sale and uh, be challenging for them to do it. I mean, that's a lot of range and a low price given the price of battery technology, but if they can do it, it could be a huge a huge uh, boost for their total sales for the company. Yeah, and, uh, and also, I mean, what's been uh, interesting to me seeing lately is that, uh, for example, at the LA Auto Show, the Green Car of the Year Award, uh, there was only one hybrid. Uh, there, there, like the the gas engine is uh, obviously pretty strong. The gas prices are not as high. So, uh, I mean, we are gonna see hybrids and electric and plug-ins and all those kind of technologies. But like uh, the regular the regular engines are still like pretty much the heart of the whole industry and will seems to be like for a long time, right? Yeah, I like to I like to paraphrase Mark Twain. You know, the death of the internal combustion engine has been greatly exaggerated. You know, they just they, they keep improving it, making it more fuel efficient, more clean burning, so there's no exhaust emissions. And they just there's a lot of life left there to continue to use gasoline. And gasoline remains the least expensive, most accessible form of uh, of energy to power a car. Um, and so it's tough to to replace it between the infrastructure challenges and the cost challenges with anything else. Yeah. Well, Cal Bauer, uh, 2013 went really, really fast, and this past hour went even faster. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> we uh, we talk about a lot, of talk a lot of topics and different cars, models, and what's coming up. So thank you very much again for your time and uh, your expertise and for sharing that with us here at uh, Auto Zero to 60. And I hope to like, obviously see you more often in 2014 and uh, keep doing these uh, radio shows with you because I really enjoy it. Uh, right back at Javier. Have a great holiday, and I uh, look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks in uh, cold Detroit, where hopefully we'll see enough cool cars that we'll forget about the temperatures and uh, you know, our, our excitement will keep us warm. Yeah, and I guess, thank you, Scar. And just like briefly, can you remind our audience where can they look for all the information about Colin Blue Book? Yeah, if they come to, you know, we're Kelly Blue Book. It's like an 87 year old brand, but kbb.com, kbb.com is our is our website. And, uh, you know, we've got a lot of information there for new and used car purchasers and researching. Okay, thank you very much, Carl, and uh, see you soon. Take care. Bye. Bueno, esa fue la edición especial de Auto 060 para despedir el 2013. Muchas gracias a ustedes por la audiencia durante todo este año. A DJ Cafa y unos controles como siempre durante todo este año. Y los espero en el 2014 con más de Auto 060. Yo soy Javier Mota y esto es Cristina Radio Network.
Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.